Uh, well, let's begin by checking the homework, all right? All right. Now, everybody here did the homework? Yes. Didn't you? Did my yes. homework. All right. Well, well um, you know, like I said yesterday, you had the answers. Yeah, but we don't use. Yeah, yeah. You were to, well, you were you to check. You should have used it. You, ah. you didn't check them afterwards? You were in check. Okay. So you, you didn't check the answers? No, I didn't check the answer. You, you know it was okay to check the answers, right? Right, but I want to know if I could. <laughs> All right, hold on. Well, so hold on. You did it and you then you check the answers or you did it and you never check the answers? I see the oh. answer. I see. I see the answer, but I didn't check with my answer. Ah, okay, so you saw them afterwards. Yes, after. Okay, okay, that's fine. That, that's, what, that's what I wanted you to do, to be honest. That, that was the, the goal, okay? Yes. So let's, let's check it out. Okay. Well, Romo, go ahead. Give me the answers for all okay. of these. My teacher told me that how to, how to review my notes every day. I guess it's a good idea to look at them after class. To look after them class after class. Do you think Carol had better save her money or spend it? She's planning to go to Europe, Europe, Europe this summer. Okay. That one right there should. Man, are you, so you did or you didn't check the answers? <laughs> yes, I checked, but I put my honest answer. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, hold on. Let me, let me give you the correct things. I'm going to write the correct things. All right, now these were the answers according to the answer key. Which ones did you have wrong or do you have any questions about any of these? Okay, I, I, I noticed I have a problem with, with the option because uh, we have a, a three mistake and this is about option. So you had the mistake one and eight. Uh, number two, number five, the part one, and number eight. Okay, how about you, Roma? Which ones did you have problems with? Roma? Nothing? Okay, well, um, Carolina, how about you? Which one do you have problem with? The number one, um, number six, and number eight. All right, great. Let's begin with number one. 
my teacher told me that I ought to, um, ought to review my notes every day. Okay, but why, why ought to? Let's look at it. You ought to finish your homework before you go out. It's your obligation. Okay. Yes. Oh, but but why? Why why ought to and why not other things? Um well I'm trying to find the place where it says why. I can't find it. I I thought I thought that uh, that it was should but but not it ought to because it's an oblig obligation. He but can't. you thought it was should it's ought to yes, because uh, obligation. Yes, yes, but but not uh huh. Okay. Yes, I, I, I see what I see what you mean. I I see that you I see what you mean. And um it, it it can be interpreted that way too, you know. I I think that it can be both. It can be ought to and it can be should. You know, in in, in reality there is no big difference between should, ought to, and had better. You know, except that had better is more aggressive and ought to is more like an obligation. But at the end of the day, you can use all of them pretty much the same way. I guess here, number one, my teacher told me that I ought to review my notes every day. Is that it's my obligation as a student. You know, my obligation as a student is to review my notes so I can get good grades. Okay. Okay. What people do? Oh. This guy. All right. And number two, I think Carol should. Now, remember, should is for an opinion. And what makes this an opinion right here is this. I'm trying to underline. It. Think. Right. Yes. Do you think that's what makes it an opinion? That's what can help you decide whether to use one, two, or three. And number, I think we said number five was another wrong one, right? Number five part one is, is my mistake. What did you put here? I put up to. Because I I told the I told it is about my obligations. So your obligation is to eat McDonald's every day. No, I I I now I <laughs> I saw no. Okay, okay, yeah. Yes, I got yes, it. Yes, I got yes. it. I got yes. it. The sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I I get what you mean. I get what you mean. All right. Um, what about number number eight? Number eight. I. So, I uh huh. Tell me. This is I, my mistake. Number eight. I I put had better because I uh -huh. I I told it was a. Uh, about the urgency. Ah, okay, okay. I get what you mean. Yes. Or worry or, or, I don't know, demand. Yeah. 
Uh, I put had better too. You put had better too? Yes. So do I. Yes, I, I see what you mean. And honestly, that one was a little confusing because if my doctor feels, you know, feels that. So it's kind of like an opinion, but it's not should. It's more like ought to. And it's more like ought to because it's, it's, an, it's like if I want to, if I'm out of shape and I want to lose weight, um, and I don't want a disease like diabetes or something, then it's my obligation to exercise. And I guess that's why they are using ought to. Okay? Okay, the key word, uh, so is feels, no? about the opinion. Yes, well, kind of, kind of, kind of, because, you know, feels is an opinion, so you would use should. But what helps us more is the context, you know, I'm out of shape, I want to lose weight, and this is my doctor that's talking to me. So, you know, all of that is like an obligation. If I don't want to die, if I don't want to become a diabetic, then my obligation is to exercise. Now, I, I will tell you this. In your exam, you don't have to worry about, oh, which one is should, which one is ought to, which one is um, had better. No, 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 you don't have to worry about that, all right? In the exam, you need to worry about whether it's should to not, shouldn't not, or no, shouldn't. You know, things like that, things with, you know, the vocabulary. The vocabulary is gonna be a big part in this, okay? So I know, I know it's a little confusing, in fact, even to me, it's like, you know, this is a weird exercise, but it, it gets you to think. It gets you to think a little more specifically. Sounds like opinion. Yeah, every, literally everything I can put should. So during the exam, we need to worry about the correct way of uh, writing, written or the correct written form. Yeah, you have to worry about it being grammatically correct you okay. don't have to worry about the meaning you know don't worry about oh is it an obligation is it this none of that all right carolina i just saw you for the first time in my life <laughs> <laughs> yes. what's a, what's a nice we saw day? you yes it's nice to see you carolina I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no why are you saying me sorry too. me too me too <laughs> it's cool thank it's you. cool thank you teacher Yes, sir. But you put three sentences, should not, should, shouldn't not, and another, no shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Three forms is correct? Oh, no, no, sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. On the second one, I made a mistake. You ah. tell me, are the are three? You was talking about the con confuse, confusion, con confused? Or how do you say? Yeah. Yeah. Confusion. Right. Confusion multiple. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that <laughs> word. So, how, how can I explain this? Hmm. In the exam, you have to check for it to be grammatically correct, you know, grammatically, I don't know if I spell that correctly. Yeah, you have to worry, you have to worry about it being grammatically correct. You won't have to worry about the difference in meaning. You know, so in the in the exam, it's not going to say what's correct, ought to, should, or had better. No, they're not going to do that. You know, they're just going to put different versions of should, different versions of had better, and different versions of ought to. And with that information, you have to decide 
what is correct. What, which is the correct answer, okay? okay? So, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you relax. <laughs> trying to help you relax, you know. Thank you. Now, here, again, it's, it's a really, exercise too, I hate it because, you know, over here, if we look at the answer key, you should, number one. Number two, you should. Number three, you ought to. Number four, you had better. Number five, you had better. Number six, you ought to. But all of the questions are with should. That is not a good thing. You know, if the question is in should, then you should be able to answer in should. So what should I do if someone's heart stops beating? Oscar? Uh, you should do CPR. You should do CPR. And now for this one, you can always use should, you know. Over here, the answer key is just an option. Carolina, what should I do if someone is bleeding a lot? I, I should, should do apply a bandage and put pleasure on the wound. Okay, great, great. And um, number three. Roma, what should I do if someone has a sprain? Is he here? Roma? No? Okay, Oscar, what should I do if someone has a sprain? Yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, sorry. Okay, <laughs> Roma? Roma. <laughs> Roma, number three. three? What should I do for some spring? I ought to put ice and bandage on the joint. On the joint. Okay, okay, great. Now you could also you could have also put should. Um yes. number four, Carolina, what should I do if someone is choking and can't breathe? I should do. Abdominal thrust. I yes. should do or you should do? You, you should yeah. do. Abdominal should thrust. Do. Abdominal thrusts, excellent. And the next one, Nidia, Nidia. What should I do if someone has a bee sting? You had better remove the, the, sting, the stinger. Stinger, excellent. Stinger. Thank you. And Oscar, what should I do if someone goes into shock? Uh, you ought to lay the victim on his back and elevate his legs. Okay, very good, very good. And exercise three. Now, exercise three is a uh, exercise that I can respect. You know, this is a good exercise. Now, tell me, what is the mistake in number one? He ought to take him to the emergency room. They ought to. Ought to, yes. Missing. Miss. Two is missing. Number two, what is the mistake? The two. Two. It's extra, right? Unnecessary right there. And number three? Cut. Pass. Yes, that two. is a mistake. What? You put shoot, no? For, for what? Number three? Number three or no? No, number three, change has uh, or had. But Romo said because in the key, uh, it says that in number three, they are answer is should or shouldn't I don't remember right here shouldn't oh yeah shouldn't shouldn't but I don't know why yeah I don't know why either 
<laughs> oh, don't worry about that. Okay. Okay. You shouldn't. That, that, that would be a weird thing to say. You shouldn't do CPR. But anyways, number four, they ought to not hurt his leg. Put not out before and two. They ought not to. Yes, they ought not to. Okay. And okay. number five, I had better not put hot water on the burn. After better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. I I better had not. I better had not. Let's check, let's check. In the negative form, had better not, excellent. All right, and that is, that is how you give advice and suggestions with those ones. Now, just to make sure that you know, you're not worried or you're not stressed about knowing the difference let me give you some examples of how it would be on the exam, okay? Okay. Like how you said, okay. Thank <laughs> you. All right. So tell me, what is the correct one for number one? Well, for the first one. Number one. Uh, number one. Number one. Okay, number two, what is the best one? Number one. Which one, two? Also number one. And for the last one, what is the best one? Number three. Number three. Number three. And that's how your questions are going to look. Okay. It's going to say choose the correct answer, and they're going to look very similar. Very, very, very similar. So um, 
you had to be careful, you know. A lot, of, uh, when, when I did the exam, I was like, what is the difference? I, oh, one is has and one is had. Such a small difference, you know. And the crazy thing is that sometimes the, the letters are too small. They are too small, so it's difficult to see. So, you know, the day that you decide to take the test, you know, make sure you get a lot of sleep. If you wear glasses, wear your glasses that day. Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I remember yes. that. I remember all my days. <laughs> yes, Vasquez has some experience with this test. Bad experience, bad experience, bad. Okay. Why, why? Because I don't sleep very well. I feel tired. I don't remember nothing. I, <laughs> I felt my internet. I felt my internet, oh my gosh. I need to do the next day and it's a horrible day. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, the, the good thing about this test is that you can decide when you take the test. You know, um, it's gonna be, I think the schedules are from Monday to Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or something like that any day and you you can decide yes so you know i i would recommend that you choose a day where you don't have to do anything after the test you know so you don't have to think about other things oh my gosh i need to go pick up my kids after the test oh my gosh you know just take the test and Relax, knowing that you don't have anything to do. You can just take a test and take a nap, you know, because this test is going to, you know, whenever you take tests, it's tiring. You know, you get sleepy and you need to rest to, to let your brain relax and things like that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Now. When I did my FC, I fell asleep like, 20 minutes during the reading exam <laughs> because it was very boring. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't like the reading either. It's, it's difficult. And when the, the the teacher or the applicant said, you, you had uh, 20 minutes to finish the exam, I, I realized that I didn't answer anything because... <laughs> Oh my gosh. I get, I, get lo I got lost. So the examiner was in the room what, when you fell asleep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but nice, I, nice. I, I tried to simulate. Ah, okay, okay. But yes, it's boring. For me, reading exams are really boring. Yeah, me too. Trust me, trust me. Very, very boring. Okay, guys, um, so our topic for today, like I had told you yesterday, it's going to be it's, it's a really good topic. I, I love, I love this topic. Oops. And today's topic, it's August 20, no, August 18. 2020 and the objective for today is to sound more formal and to focus on objects using the passive voice. All right. Now, I had a very good example the other day with one of my students. You know, my students, he, one of my students, he is the owner of a papeleria, or over here we call it a paper shop or a copy shop. And, you know, we, he was telling us about this incident he had after I explained, we explained the passive voice to him, you know. He said, oh, teacher, I know I have a good, I have a good example. I can say my laptop, 
my laptop was stolen. Instead of saying someone stole my laptop. Now like, wow, that, that's a really good example because to him, you know, he, he is the owner of this business. He doesn't care about the person that stole his laptop. He cares about his laptop, you know? It can, if, if a girl stole it, if a boy stole it, if a dog stole it, obviously he, he doesn't like the person who stole it. But the most important thing is his laptop because it affects his business. So he wants to focus on the laptop and he uses the passive voice. My laptop was stolen, all right? And the other way would be someone stole my laptop. But if you say someone stole my laptop, you are focusing on the person and not the object, all right? And in his case, his laptop is more important. So he puts more focus on the object, in this case, the laptop, okay? And you, and you can do that with anything. Okay. Scientists make almond milk in a lab. Or I can say almond milk is made in a lab. And if you want to say by scientists, you can say that. It's optional. Okay. Scientists make almond milk in a lab. I am focusing on the scientists. Almond milk is made in a lab. I am focusing on the almond milk. Do you, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and that is the passive voice. Um, in this case, we're gonna talk about the passive voice and vertical farming. Have any of you heard of vertical farming? Mm, no. Or maybe yes, but not in that with that name. Okay, Nidia Carolina, have you heard about vertical farming? Huh? Yes. Oh, agricultor. No, no, I don't remember. Okay. All right. So. Vertical farming is the future of farming, okay? Let's watch this to see why. Please watch this video. With the global population set to exceed 10 billion people by 2050, the challenge of providing a food for everyone in a sustainable, efficient and cost-effective way is rising in significance. Shedding the restrictions of seasonal weather patterns, overcoming transportation challenges and significantly enhancing yields, the growing trend of vertical farming could herald the future of food production. Slow. Yes, it's only my computer runs slow. Hold on, let me see. I'm gonna try it one more time. Tell, tell me how how it how it how it looks. You need to close more application or no? Hold on, let, let's try it like this. If it if it doesn't work, then I will close more things. Tell me. Global population set to exceed 10 billion people by 2050, the challenge of providing enough food for everyone in a sustainable, efficient and cost-effective way is rising in significance. Is that better? Shedding the restrictions of seasonal weather patterns, overcoming... It's really slow? Yes. Okay, let me force quick some things then. I'm going to close previews. Close iTunes. I'm going to close Zoom. No, I'm just kidding. Well, 
right, let, let, let's try it one more time, one more time. This is an important video. Vertical farming. With the global population set to exceed 10 billion people by 2050, the challenge of providing enough food for everyone in a sustainable, efficient and cost-effective way is rising in significance. Shed Can you see it better? Mm -hmm. Yes. A little bit. Okay. Great. Yes, if it's slow, then start. All right. But just read the, the subtitles. In the restrictions of seasonal weather patterns, overcoming transportation challenges, and significantly enhancing yields, the growing trend of vertical farming could herald the future of food production. For thousands of years, human populations have farmed the land for food. But with a sharp rise in the number of people on our planet over recent centuries, as a result of the Industrial Revolution, increased living standards and falling mortality rates, the pressure on traditional farming has continually increased. While modern techniques have enabled enhanced production rates, more than 11% of the world's total land area is now used for crop production creating environmental challenges that range from habitat clearing to soil degradation and placing immense pressure on our planet's resources. Furthermore, as our cities expand, the distances between suitable farming land and the large populations who consume its produce are growing, raising the impact of transportation. Added to these challenges are a changing climate that is disrupting seasonal weather patterns and the lack of suitable soils in close proximity to rapidly expanding areas. One potential solution is the quite literally growing trend of vertical farming, a concept that sees the sprawling crop farms of old condensed into much smaller factory-like sites where conditions can be optimised and yields significantly increased. Facilities like aero farms in New Jersey see crops produced in an enclosed environment where almost everything from lighting and ambient temperature to soil conditions and nutrients are carefully controlled. The facility uses extensive vertical racking to optimise space as compared to a conventional crop farm, enabling it to be located on a far smaller site and much closer to an established urban area. Such a location reduces the extent of haulage or food miles required to transport produce to consumers, cutting CO2 emissions. Geography aside, the creation of controlled conditions delivers many benefits. Firstly, the process of crop production is insulated from seasonal weather patterns that are highly susceptible to disruption as a result of our changing climate. On a vertical farm, Lighting, water and temperature can all be optimised to remove climatic risks and enhance production rates. As a result, sites like Mirai's facility near Tokyo, the world's largest city, are able to generate yields that are 50 to 100 times greater than that of a traditional crop farm. The use of a controlled environment also eliminates the losses from birds and insects that must be factored on conventional farms cutting the need for harmful pesticides to be used and improving the quality of produce. Vertical farms also optimise the level of nutrients that crops receive, solving the challenge of finding a sufficient extent of suitable farming land in close proximity to a major urban area. In many instances, soil is removed altogether and crops are grown on membranes where they are sprayed with nutrient-rich solutions. Of course, vertical farms do have their limitations, and critics have pointed to the level of energy required to maintain such refined environments. While these concerns are valid, several vertical farms are powered by renewable technologies and recycle many of their resources. The use of energy-efficient LED lighting reduces power consumption, while the blue and red shades of lights are even more economical to run. 
The optimized crop production process also allows vertical farmers to reduce the amount of water used, and many vertical farms are served by rainwater harvesting systems. Some even collect and recycle the water that condenses within the controlled environment itself. This closed cycle approach has the added benefit of preventing nutrients and fertilizers from damaging land or being washed into rivers and streams. Though the cost and availability of land for vertical farms in urban areas can prove challenging, many facilities are finding home in repurposed shipping containers, former factories and disused warehouses. Grander schemes like this proposal by Studio NAB could even see the vertical farming concept broadened to include the production of fish and honey, while reconnecting consumers with the food production process and establishing sustainable jobs for the surrounding community. While the vertical concept still represents a small part of the global food production industry, the benefits it offers to our ever-expanding population could come to tilt the farming landscape by 90 degrees. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M. So what do you think about vertical farming? Okay, first, I, 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 I subscribe with this channel, it's very good. And second, <laughs> and second is, is that uh, know about the, the loss employees. Uh, example in, in our country, because the, the farmer uh, are, are poor. And, and with this, or with this, lost, lost employees, or lost the, lost the, the production, the, the, the sales. You think so? Yes, I think so. Okay, okay. Um, that, that could be true, you know, unemployment could be a big problem. Um, well, yeah, the employees could lose their jobs, but also, you know, they, they might be able to, you know, receive training and make a, make a better, be, be better farmers. You know, you know what, what would be a good idea is if you took all the farms in the world and you make them into four or five, six stories so you know because like like they said in the video you have one in a, in a farm and in, in a normal farm you have one floor of food yeah. but what if you make it into buildings 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 you'll have more floors you'll be able to make two three four times more production you don't have to worry about you know birds or pesticide or pests yes. transportation this, this transportation it should be close to the. In yes. our country, we are we are poor, and the farmers are poor. We maybe we don't have the the, the money for to for this technology about the, the vertical. The You're right. Farmers. You're right. You're right. I hope that you know, in the few years you know, somebody decides to do this. Page 84. Like if, if somebody decided to start this in a city like Monterrey or, or Mexico City, you know, those big cities, I, I think it would work, you know? And I, I remember watching another video that, you know, they say that the food grows sometimes two or three times faster you know, because it's literally in the perfect conditions. The, the temperature is controlled, the water is controlled, 
the solar lights are controlled, the nutrients are controlled. So you, you have plants grow faster and they are more delicious, you know, because they don't taste like dirt. You know, for example, us, you know, if we eat you know, like romaine lettuce, if we go to the market and buy some lettuce, sometimes it has bugs, it has dirt and all of that stuff. But in this place, it will be, it will have more nutrients and it will and not also, have any bugs. And also it is says that uh, uh, farmers, uh, whether the, all the, yeah, the, the vegetables with uh, dark water, dirty water or. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> well, well water. Yeah, so it could be healthier than. That's true because in these places they use the, the water from the rain, right? They collect the water from the rain and they store it in the same water they use to recycle everything. Yes, so, the, 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 the project is, is, is excellent. It's excellent because it's is uh, I worry about the sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. You're right, you know, but we like you said, we are a poor country and I hope that we can find a way to make this a reality because you know we're Mexicans and we like to have children. <laughs> So we're gonna need yes. a lot of land. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's true. It's true. All right. Well, um, I'm gonna. I want to teach you a little bit about the passive voice. You know, you can use the passive voice almost in every single tense. Every single tense. All right. Hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you some simple passive voices, All right? We're going to begin with the most common. The most common ones are the passive voice with the simple present, right? People play soccer in... Okay, wait, I, I, can, I can see the, the letters. It's too small? It's too small? Yes? Okay. What about now? Is that better? It's great. It's great. Lydia? Is that better? A little. Okay. Maybe it could be your internet connection, no? Mine? No, Nidia. But you guys can see it correctly? Yes. Yes. Can you see everything? Okay. All right. Well, Nidia. Yeah, yeah, I, I see now. Thank you. Okay, great. People play soccer in Mexico. Soccer is played in Mexico. What happened? What happened in this sentence? What changed? That we focus on the object, not in the subject. Exactly. So in number, number one, people play soccer in Mexico. Um, the focus is people and the object is soccer, right? So to make an active sentence passive, we move the object to the beginning of the sentence, right? Soccer is now the subject. It is now the subject of the passive voice. Now, 
In this case, the, sub, the subject is not doing anything. Soccer is not doing anything. You know, soccer is played in Mexico. Now, why do I use, why do I use is right here? Why do I use is? Because of the tense of the sentence. What do you mean? Uh, if we are talking in present, we're going to use passive voice with present, but we are you, but we use is to emphasize like to like emphasize the action that the object suffer. Ah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yes. So like he said, we use is because in the passive voice we always use the verb to be. Always, always, always. I'm gonna write that right here. In the passive voice it will always be verb to be plus past participle, okay? Verb to be plus past participle. Now, the verb to be depends on the, on the time tense, right? It depends on the time tense. For example, Number one, we use is, okay? Now, but look at number two. She ate three tacos at the restaurant. Three tacos were eaten at the restaurant. Three tacos were eaten at the restaurant. What happened? Again, my subject in the passive voice was my object in the active. Now, three tacos, take it to the beginning. She ate three tacos at the restaurant. Three tacos were eaten. Now, if you notice, here I used were. I use were because this is in the past and the past of the verb to be is was or were. And since tacos is plural, then I use were. Okay, is this making sense so far? Yes. Yes. And the, and the second verb is past participle. Exactly. The second verb is the past participle. We will always use the past participle no matter what. Ma Matt, are you here? Can you hear me, Mr. Matt? Yes, I'm here, teacher. Do you have any questions? I saw the sentence and I have a doubt that you explain why do you use where? Okay, great, great. Yes, 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 yes. All right. The next one. Now, that's the present and that's the past. Let's go to something a little more complicated. The present perfect. All right. They haven't built. What, what's that thing they're building in, in Yucatan? AMLO? What's his plan? The... The Mayan train. Mayan huh? train. Okay, they yeah. haven't built the Mayan train yet. All right. Who is they? Who cares about they? Now, what do we do? The Mayan train. The Mayan train. Haven't been. What? 
haven't been. Haven't. No, I haven't. It's third person singular. Ah, hasn't. Hasn't. Yes, yes, yes. Hasn't been. Hasn't been. Built. Built. Yet. Okay. Now, in this case, the Mayan train is the object, and we make that the passive subject. Okay. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write that um, note down so you can remember it. The active object becomes the passive subject. All right, so the number one, number two, and number three, or this, this, and this, these are the active ones, okay? Soccer is the object. Three tacos is the object. The mind train is the object. But in the passive voice, we make it the subject, okay? Now, let's move on to the next one, a little more complicated with going to. They're going to build the Mayan train this year. They're going to build the Mayan train this year. Let's see, Nidia. The Mayan train. The Mayan train. Are going to? Yeah. Like a future? Hmm? Really? No, 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 no. Oh? The future, but we're going to. Okay. Is. Is. Is going to build. Going to what? To build. Mm. Oh. Remember, you always use the verb to be and then the past participle. Okay. If you need help, you yeah. can use this right here to help you. Bill? Only Bill? You're forget what? Only Bill? No, nope, you're forgetting one thing. In present. In present what? The verb you. No. Let me help you. To be. Ah, okay. What goes here? Yes, be. Be. The mine train is going to be built this year. Okay. okay. Now, um, going to is a verb complement. Almost with all verb complements, you're going to use simply be. Okay, simply be. Here are some more examples of verb complements. Number five, um, will. Okay, they will build it this year, I will say it will be built this year. Um, the scientists won't sell the vaccine. for a cheap price. 
scientists won't sell the vaccine for a cheap price. Let's see, who is here? Who is here? Hmm. Oscar, make this passive, please. Yes. Um, the vaccine won't be sell, won't be sold. Yes. The vaccine won't be sold for a cheap price. Excellent. And let's see, one more, one more. No, two more. Two more, two more. They might destroy the border. In the passive voice, Carolina? They might destroy the border. The border? Carolina? Okay, no, no, if you don't want to, it's okay. Uh, Matt? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, tell me. Complete the sentence? Yes. Okay, they might destroy the border. The border might be destroyed. Very good, the border might be destroyed. That's excellent. And now you do the same thing for all of these. Like, for example, need to, need to be. Have to, have to be. Um, like to, like to be. Okay, you know, all of the auxiliaries, the modal verbs, that's what you do. Can't be, couldn't be, wouldn't be, you know. All of those, you just simply add B, like will, won't, might, okay? Yes. Now, let's do this next exercise. Can I erase all of this? Not yet. Not yet? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Ready. Yes. Okay, I'm going to erase it now. And this is what you have to do. Okay. Can everybody see the, the sentences right here? Yes. You know, if if you need to take a screenshot of this, please do it. Maybe it will help you with this exercise. All right. Now, Romo, 
Read the instructions for us, sir. You write the underlying part of the sentence from the rest of the interview. Use the passive and add and add B where it where it's needed. Then listen it and check your answer. Okay. Add by. Okay. By? Now you can add by when the doer is important. Okay. Do it when the doer is important. Um, for example, my house was destroyed by a tornado. Now the tornado is important because, um, well, it's a natural disaster. Another thing is the cure was found by a Mexican scientist. All right, now Mexican scientist is important because, well, we're Mexican <laughs> and we're important. So uh, what, what I don't want you to do is something like this. The cure was found by them. No, man, a, a pronoun is not important, okay? So you can say the cure was found by a Mexican scientist or the cure was found like that. Now, in real life, you can decide what is important and what is not important, okay? But when you are doing these type of exercises, pay attention to the article, the, or any type of specific thing, okay? Like a Mexican scientist or a tornado. Those are a little specific. All right, so you're gonna change the underlying words. All right, I'm gonna help you with number one. We're gonna do number one together. All right, so, so crops will be grown in water. I know they do this. This is the simple present. My object is this. So remember, I need to put this in the beginning. So this, I know this, is or this are? This, are. this is. This is. Because this is singular. It's one thing. This okay. is done. This is done. I know this is done already, but how does it work? They add nutrients. My object, nutrients. So I put that in the beginning. Nutrients. Are. The present. Are. Added. added. Nutrients are added to the water. So the plants use less energy. Less energy is used is used by plants. By the plants. Okay, now we put by because the plants has the word the it's specific okay so less energy is used by the plants and plants that they grow hmm they grow we don't have an object here so forget the object because it is right here plants is the object so plants that is or plants that are are plants that are grown wow. okay because it's a simple present plants that are grown okay now in your notebook i just want you to write the the correct answer and we will check it in maybe six minutes okay okay all right guys if you have any questions i'm gonna be here but i'm gonna turn off the or as the British people say, answers. Well, people often say that if you have this, you are correct. If you don't have this, what did you have? 
Yes, dude. I have to say. Okay, next. Um, no. Pesticides won't be needed. Pesticides won't be needed. This is because the crops will be protected inside the building. So the use of pesticides will be reduced. Okay, the use of pesticides will be reduced and groundwater, which has been contaminated by pesticides for years will be cleaner. Now, reports say that vertical farms are going to be seen in our cities soon. Is that true? Well, they can't be built without more research. Um, some trials have to be carried out. Oh, no, no, that was wrong. Some trials were carried out last year and a report was written. But they haven't published it yet. But it hasn't been published yet. I'd say they're not going to build them anytime soon. I'd say they aren't going to be built anytime soon. But environmentalists say we must not ignore, we must not ignore the situation and take action. Okay? But environmentalists say the situation must not be ignored. And action should be taken soon because more food is going to be needed with the population increasing by 5,000 a day. All right. They say that a solution needs to be found soon. Okay. Damn, we have 5,000 new people every day. That must be in the United States only. <laughs> because I think we have more people every day. <laughs> All right. But yeah, this, this is it right here, guys. If you have these, you are correct. If you don't have these, then you are not correct. You need to study. <laughs> but, but, you know, there that's no problem. You know, th this was only the beginning. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave some homework with the passive voice. And um, maybe I can send this to you too. So you can, you know, use it and look at the grammar chart a little bit more. And... Tomorrow we will review this a little bit more to make sure that we have a better understanding of it. Okay? Okay. But uh, in general, how do you feel about the passive voice? Do you think it's difficult, easy, or medium? From zero to 10, where is it? 10 is super easy. Teacher, sorry, in the, in the last sentence. Hey. Uh, in the last sentence, number number three, and the last, the last, they say, uh, don't put the, the verb to be. It's right there. The verb to be is right there. A solution needs to be found. Okay. I, I don't know. Thank you. 
Dice, de pasivo es la condicional, ¿no? Mm, no. Or what do you mean by that? Because we have to, to transform it, the, the sentence with the, with the, with the, the, the verbs and. Yeah, you, yeah, well, you know, in real life, you know, you don't transform sentences. You know, this is only uh, an activity. You know, in real life, we use the passive voice when we are talking about the news. You know, the news, the news, the news. This is the most common thing. Why? Because when you use, when you talk about the news, it's usually in, informative. And sometimes you don't care about the person. You care about the situation or the object. Right now, sometimes you do care about the person like Kim Kardashian and Barack Obama, Donald Trump. But in most of the times, um, they care about what's happening. So for example, in the newspaper, you're not going to read, a person killed three people in Acapulco. No, you're going to read, three people were killed in Acapulco last night. And it, it focusing on the object, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's more common to use the passive voice because it sounds formal and you are focusing on the object, the situation, the person, the animal in a different way. Do you have a question on um, Nydia or Carolina? Uh, we're going to study more the next class, right? Tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow it's we will probably... For me, maybe uh, seven. Okay, seven. Oh, seven is not bad. Seven is not bad. But okay, hopefully tomorrow we can turn that seven into a nine or to a I'm ten. I'm going to an tomorrow. analyze this part for understand the the sense of the sentence of the sentences. Okay. Okay, that's good. And don't like I said, tomorrow we will see it again. Um, tomorrow we're gonna review this a little bit more, and we're going to do something else. I I always to study study more. <laughs> hey, nice, nice, good use of grammar. Okay. Thank you. Thank well, do you have any other questions for me, guys? No. No. Any no? questions? All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a nice evening. And if God willing, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Take Bye. care.